ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode uh, 136 of the Speared Sundays podcast. My name is uh, Lewis Spears, I'm your host for this evening, uh, and uh, I'm recording this one on a Wednesday, so you know, all those fucking Patreon cunts supporting what I do, get it nice and early. Everyone else, hey man, you listen to this, it's old news, dude. I'm talking about, you're listening on a Sunday? You're listening to Spearhead Sundays on a Sunday? <laughs> Fuck are you, man? What are you doing, all right? Here's the thing. Speared Sundays generally comes out the Thursday after. But if <laughs> but if you're a Patreon supporter, it comes out the Thursday before. So fucking hook me up. Dude, have you guys seen that, um, all that Juice World shit? I got a bit of a cough too. Sorry if that fucks you up. But have you guys seen that Juice World stuff? You know that cunt, uh, that... I still see your shadow in, or whatever, whatever the fuck it is. I see your shadow in my room. Nah, 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 nah. You know that one? That fucking song talking, whinging about his girlfriend, the cunt's 18 years old. Oh, oh really? You got your heart broken, did you, man? Or, or, or were you 18 and she just didn't want to go to the movies with you? I still see shadows in my room. Do, do, do. I fucked a girl once and then I fell in love. <laughs> you know that song? Right? Juice Winge? I actually like him. I don't know why I'm making fun of the dude, right? Um, I didn't know this, but he actually, uh, Sting, right? You know Sting from The Police? What's that song? That other fucking, that other weird song? About stalking? I don't know. What's that fucking song? Sting. I'm going to look it up now. What's that song about Sting song? Police song. Oh, it's just come with a bunch of children's videos. Police band. Well, that's just going to come with a bunch of police bands. Ah, that's right. Every move you make, every breath you take... I'll be fucking watching that song, right? That creepy, creepy as fuck song. Just, here's the thing. Juice World, if you don't know, uh, he, that biggest fucking song that he did, right? He actually, uh, I didn't know this, but he, he stole the guitar riff or whatever the fuck Sting's playing. He's playing some giant 12 string oval pyramid. That's what it looks like he's playing, right? So... He stole the fucking... He stole, like, a guitar riff off one of Sting's biggest songs. And then, uh, that's why he now has one of the biggest songs in the world. Listen to this shit, right? I, I just found out about this. So, this is Sting, right? I see the shadows in my... And then, fucking... This is Juice World. It's the same shit, right? I still see shadows of your taint in my room. <laughs> right? So anyway, I saw this shit all over Twitter. Fucking Sting, being Sting, is like, Hey man, I'm one of the most influential music artists in the world. You can't just steal my riff, make a hit song out of it, make millions of dollars in a career. It's time to cough up. Time to give me your money, dog. Right? So Sting sues Juice World and <laughs> and takes 85%. What a fucking boss. The balls to be like, Hey man, I see you took my guitar riff. Nice song you got there. And then Juice will be like, Oh yeah, I did. I, I just liked it, man. Like, come on. It's like my first song that's ever gone well. Can go easy on me? And Sting's like, Hey man, look at this. I bet this, this is what he did for sure, right? Sting would have got out his phone and he would have been like, Hey, Juice World, check this out. And he goes on his banking app and he opens it up and he just shows in the balance and he goes, check this shit out, right? And it's like, $50 million. And he goes, I just want you to know that's my personal expenses account. There's my business account. Then there's my other company's account. But this is just my personal expense. I have $50 million. How much you got? Not as much as that. Okay. Well, I just want you to know that, that I could never make another, another dollar in my life and I would die one of the richest people on the planet. So I don't need any money. Uh, but I want 85% of yours <laughs> for all eternity. What a fucking king. 
And then Juice World goes on Twitter and has a fucking whinge and his producer has a whinge, right? I saw this this tweet from the producer of the track, which, if we're being uh, correct now, the producer of the track was Sting. <laughs> Not whoever the fuck this guy is, right? So, he goes on, uh, on Twitter, right? And he goes, Fuck Sting and his whole team. After taking 85% of lucid dreams, he threatened to take us to court for trying to get any percent. That's amazing. So Sting was like, oi, cunt, give me 85%. And then Juice was like, oh, I don't know, man. Do you reckon I, do you reckon I could get like 30? Maybe I could get 30%. And you, you know, you could have, you could have 70%. And Sting was like, hey, man, what the fuck did you say? Do you want me to open up my bank balance? I will take you to court and you can spend your 15% on lawyer's fees and I'll pay my lawyer's fees with your fucking money and then I'll still turn a profit. And he's like, okay, I guess you can have 85% then. I'm sorry, Sting. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then he goes, um, Sting also flex stealing our money. Hey, dude. Hey, your money? Really? Did he steal your money or did you steal his music and make money out of that? Is that what is that what's happening? If someone steals my joke and then just says it makes money out of it, hey man, that's my money. <laughs> that's not yours. 85%. That's you're getting off light. You still get 15%, dude. You got 15% of Sting's money? That's pretty good. That's 15% of 50 million. What's that? That's a lot. I'd be happy with 15% of Sting money. And besides, dude, it's not just, you don't, it's not just, he's only taking money out of the song. That fucking song blew up Juice World, and now he's selling like, he probably sold like 100,000 t-shirts. Easy. Right? So, live off your fucking t-shirt money, bro. Not your Sting money. That's fine. Anyway, this, this producer goes on to say, Sting also flexed stealing our money and said it put his grandkids through college. Fuck Sting. Hey, I read that and I thought, man, that's the best shit I've ever seen in my life. Sting just did the most alpha shit ever. He took 85% of some 19-year-old thief's money and then was like, hey, dude, this shit's going to put my grandkids through college. My kids are done. It'll put my grandkids through college. I just want you to know that, bro, and I don't even need the money. But you took my fucking riff, so I take your fucking money and put my grandkids through college with it. And I could have afforded to done it myself, but hey, if you're giving out free money, I'll I'll scoop that shit right up. <laughs> right? And this is the this is the best part of the tweet though, right? The producer says after taking 85% of lucid dreams and then he put in brackets for interpolating shape of my heart, which the shape of my heart is the sting song, right? For interpolating shape of my heart, not even sampling. Now, I had to Google interpolating because when I first read that tweet, I was like, oh, that's kind of fucking bullshit if he interpolated it. I mean, uh, surely that's different. I Googled what interpolating means. Interpolating is different from sampling. So a sample is when you take the original recording and you chop it up a little bit, you put it in your song, you modify it, whatever. Interpolating is when you take, like, a, say, a, a piano or, or a, a simpler example, say, a, a guitar riff, right? You take the guitar riff, put it in your song, use the same notes, but play it with a different instrument. Which is worse than sampling, because at least with sampling, you sample it and it's obvious where the track comes from. Interpolating is just a 16 syllable word for we fucking stole your riff. That's what that, that's what interpolating, that's what that shit is. That's like, oh man, I, uh, I just interpolated one of your jokes. I, uh, what I did is I, I said all of the words in your joke, uh, but I said it with my voice, so I didn't steal it, I interpolated it. Hey dude, why don't you interpolate my dick in your mouth? <laughs> I just think that's the cool, that that made me go. You know what? I'm gonna fucking listen to some Sting. That's the coolest shit ever. Just taking 85 percent of some dude who stole your riff. 
Imagine being mad about that. You took someone's riff, didn't even sample it, didn't credit them, and then got angry when he took your money. It's not your money, dude. That's my riff. You're lucky you got 15%. I was, I always was wondering why that fucking song blew up so big out of nowhere. And it's because it's already a song that fucking blew up incredibly huge uh, from an established band. And then some dickhead just copied it. <laughs> and he's like, oh... Oh, why did I get caught? No, oh. no, oh, I got caught. Now I'm only now I've only got a couple fucking less million dollars. Hey, relax, dude. You don't make any money out of music anyway. You make money out of touring and t-shirts. So you're lucky that Sting isn't coming for those as well. <laughs> Fuck Sting for claiming what is his. Amazing. Good on you, Sting. I stand by it. Fuck, I'm hot. I gotta take my jumper off. Give me a sec. All right, I'm back, and I'm wearing my, I'm wearing a, a fucking Dragon Ball Z Freezer t-shirt that I'm pretty sure I got when I was 15, and for some reason I still have it, and it definitely does not fit me at all. But uh, hey, it's got Freezer on it, so I fucking wore it today. Um, oh, while we're talking about music, can we can we all? I have something very important to say that I think that we should all agree with. Uh, and this is a very strong opinion, but it's also a very correct opinion. Um, hey, music, hey, hey, music, stick to one language stick to one language i'm sick of listening to a fucking tune that i'm really enjoying i'm like fuck yeah this song is amazing i love lyrics that are in a language that i can understand i can relate to this song and then halfway through some fuckhead called bad bunny or whatever starts screaming in a language that i can't understand it's like hey where where did cardi b go who the fuck is this guy i've never heard of him why does he have 30 million followers on instagram i don't speak his language i can't enjoy this music the beat's still good but i got no idea what this guy's saying for all i know he could be he could be saying some real racist shit and i'm just bobbing my head like i, I got no idea that's so confusing dude Music, stick to one language. And all these people are like, oh, 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 look at this bloody white person uh, trying to make everyone stick to stick to his language. It's like, no, 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 you can make music in other languages. Just, just pick one. Like, if you want to make a, a song in Spanish, fucking make a song in Spanish. But don't make a song that's 50% Spanish, 50% English, because that's confusing as fuck. And it makes me feel like an idiot. Makes me feel like an uncultured fool because I know that there's a lot of people that can understand both of those languages and then I'm just sitting there really enjoying the first half of the track and then when some other guy starts coming on and rolling his R's and saying things with syllables that I've never heard before, I'm like, oh, fuck, I, I think I might have heard one of these words in Spanish class but I wasn't really paying attention. I, I never thought I would need it in, in life again but here we are, I'm listening to a fucking Cardi B song, confused out of my brain. It's like, it's like you wouldn't, you wouldn't fucking, you know what it'd be? It'd be like if you, if, if you made it like, or, okay, here's the thing. If you are going to make a, here's the thing. If you are going to make a song out of two different language, make it out of two obscure languages that would never meet, right? English and anything would always meet. But why don't we make like a song out of some real obscure languages? Like fucking, why don't we make a song out of Cantonese and, uh, traditional Gaelic, you know, from Ireland. <laughs> like, I, that's what I want to hear. I want to hear, I want to hear a Chinese Gaelic hit. That'd be my thing, right? You just be vibing along some, some Chinese fucking strings and all of a sudden some Irish dude with a fiddle comes in and just starts screaming about gold and beer. Or Guinness. Do they drink Guinness in Ireland or is that Scotland? I think I fucked up here. Um, old sober Louie making big calls about alcohol. Is Guinness Irish? Oh, no. Is it? Hey, it's fucking Irish. There we go. Guinness is an Irish dry stout that originated in the brewery of, of, of Arthur Guinness. Ah, oh, dude, it's, his name is Guinness? That's the coolest shit ever. I love finding out that a word that we've been using... Our whole lives is just like some cunt's name. And he's like, yeah, man, Guinness. Like, wasn't there, isn't there some cunt in medicine that's named something after himself? Hey, man, probably. But I'm a comedian. I'm a fucking idiot. I don't know anything about that. 
But yeah, music. You got to stick to one language, man. I understand, right? You know what it is? It's just a money grabbing move. Like, you know, and you know Cardi B, right? Doesn't speak Spanish that well. (laughs) You know, like she speaks, you know, she only speaks Spanish to her grandma. You know that, right? She's one of those Spanish people. It's like, uh, it's like Greek people that only that only speak another language when they're talking to their grandparents and it's like really stuttery one syllable shit and they can hardly even understand their own grandmother it would be like if if your fucking mate Demetrios just released a fucking club track that was half in English and half in Greek and then you're like dude you don't speak that language and he's like yeah I know I don't speak the language but I did learn uh, 50% of a song and I said it kind of without an accent but uh, we had to do a lot of takes. You know that's what fucking happened when they recorded that. They were like, oh, oh man, fucking, we'll just get uh, Bad Bunny in and then we'll make twice as much money as we normally would. That's what it all is. It's, you know what, guys? You know what? I'm just to attract more people to listen to this podcast and to make more money. Or, hey, how about when I say more money, what I really mean is some money. Because <laughs> I make no money out of this fucking shit. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start doing 50% of this podcast in German. And I only studied German for about four years in high school. And I got pretty average marks, even though I tried really hard. So here we go. That was the first half of the podcast. Here begins the second half. Or das zwei Hafen. <laughs> what is it? Um, how do you say? I don't know how to say girls. Guten Tag! Girls und Menschen. Oh no, Menschen is girls. Ah, uh, whatever. Meine Name is Louis Spears. Meine Geburtstag ist am 16. Januar und ich bin ein Berliner. And that's all I got. <laughs> that was four years. I'm pretty sure uh, when I said when my birthday was and that I'm a Berliner. And I didn't actually learn I'm a Berliner in German class. I learned that from fucking, what's the guy that lost his brain? Um, uh, Kennedy, you know, the president. <laughs> what, what's the guy who lost his brain? Yeah, Kennedy, the American president. Didn't he fucking say that in Berlin? Ich bin ein Berliner. Oh, dude, I haven't had a... Uh, I've, uh, yesterday, we had a big fucking emergency at the warehouse. I was here and it was raining real hard. Uh, so this, this is the, the it, my warehouse fucking flooded again, um, and it was the worst one so far. It was pretty fucked. But we found out what the problem is. See, see, normally, the it's flood. This is the third time it's flooded. The first two times, warehouse guy he was like, okay, I fix it, and he and he jumped on top of the roof and got people on the roof and went through and fixed holes and all that kind of shit. Then it happened again, and I was like, oh man, it happened again. He's like, oh, I'll fix it. And he got people on the roof and they covered up holes and all that shit and then it happened again but it happened when I was here and I saw what happened so for some fucking reason you guys know how a house and a, a building and just about a where any any kind of structure right they have a gutter you know there's when rain hits the roof it slides down the roof and then there's a gutter on the outside of the roof that uh, takes the water down a pipe and then into the sewage system, right? And the uh, the gutter generally is on the outside of the house, right? My gutter is on (laughs) the inside. (laughs) Why is there a gutter on the inside of the warehouse, right? There's a fucking gutter. I'm looking at it right now. It goes all the way down the length of my warehouse, and it's on the inside. Not the outside, the inside. Imagine having a fucking gutter in your bedroom. That's what I got, right? I got a gutter on the inside, right? So what happened is uh, apparently a month or two ago, there was some like maintenance or some shit. The council did something with the pipes. They built a new gutter outside the warehouse on the street. 
And in the process of doing that, they must have accidentally clogged one of the pipes. So when it rains, the rain hits the roof, it slides down the roof, it goes into the gutter, and the gutter is on a th the inside of the warehouse, and then it runs down the, the gutter, which is on the inside of the, my warehouse and a nobody else's warehouse. Um, and then it goes down the pipe, but the pipes block, so then the water comes back up the pipe, and then it gets back to the gutter, and because the gutter is on a th the inside of my warehouse, the, it has nowhere to go, and then it comes out and uh, it goes all over the floor, because the gutter is on th the inside of the warehouse, instead of th the outside, like everyone else in the, in the fucking developed world, right? So I was here, and uh, the, the gutter burst inside the warehouse, and then rain just started falling down. Uh, luckily, me and my editor were here when it happened, so we just, like, it fell on top of the, the merch area, which I had just set up fucking perfectly, and I was sending out orders and stuff, and it was working really well. I got, like, a cube shelf that has all of the shirts folded up, packed up nicely, arranged by size, and then this rainwater starts falling on top of the shelf. So I was like, fuck, save the merch! And I just ripped everything out and threw it onto the other side of the warehouse. It's in this giant pile. It's like 300 t-shirts. Only a couple of them got wet, which we'll have to throw out. Uh, which is, but the, but the rest of it is fine, but now it's all mixed up in a giant fucking pile, it's going to take me like all day to rearrange and set up again. Um, and uh, then I grabbed one of my plastic tubs that we keep the t-shirts in, I chucked all the shirts out of it, and I just put the tub where the rain was falling, so it was like filling up, and it's these, these shitty plastic Kmart tubs, like storage tubs, you know, that are not meant to store... Uh, 50 litres of fucking rainwater, <laughs> right, so I put it on top of the shelf, and then it starts to fill up, and then I text the warehouse guy, I'm like, my warehouse is flooding because the gun is on the inside, right, and so he, he warehouse guy runs over, and he starts helped me move shit, and he's like, oh, fuck, at least we know what the problem is, and I was like, yeah, and the water was falling straight onto an electrical outlet, so the place could have burnt down, like, fuck, we were there, um, <clears throat> and then anyway, the, the tub fills up, so, and it's a big tub, it's, it's, it's for storing, like, a hundred t-shirts or something, so it's like a big tub, so, and it's on top of a shelf, so I need his help, and I'm like, all right, we're gonna have to move it off and then throw the water out, and at this point, there's no water on the floor, I moved so quickly, there was no water on the floor, but the gutter, which is on the inside of the warehouse, is, like, shitting out water so fast and filling up this tub. So we've got to move this tub outside and throw the water out, right? So we pick up the tub and it's heavy as fuck. Both of us are moving it and then both of us start to drop it because it's too heavy. So we're like, all right, just lower it to the floor. We lower it down to the floor. It touches the floor and then because it's a shitty plastic tub, it's just like, fuck this and explodes and sends probably like, 50 litres of water just going straight down the carpet. And there was this moment, because me and the warehouse guy don't really know each other that well, because we never really speak. There was this moment where he was touching the plastic tub that just dumped 50 litres of water on my carpet. And even though it was not his fault, right, both of us, he looked at me, and, and, and we had this moment where I could tell he was thinking, fuck, man. <laughs> What type of person is this guy? <laughs> you know, is when there's like a an accident that's not really anyone's fault, but could definitely be blamed on someone else if the the blamer is an angry psycho. You have that moment if you don't know the person well, where where the, where you just look at them and you go, "Oh, I hope he's not a psycho." <laughs> Because I could have easily gone, oh, you fucking, you got water. Ah, I could have, I could have lost my shit, right? But he just looks at me and I just laughed. I just thought it was funny. I was like, oh, fucking, of course. And he just went, oh, thank God. Let's focus on the task at hand. And like, and then we just start cleaning the shit up. And I had to throw out, I, I don't know. It, it actually was pretty bad when that hit the floor. 
damaged a whole bunch of shit. I had to throw out like half of my carpet. There's still a big puddle of water uh, on the concrete that hasn't evaporated yet. But we say a, a lot of a, a few t-shirts and posters got fucked, uh, which sucks. But um, no, none of the camera gear, which is the main thing. Um, so that fucking sucks. But uh, what <laughs> what was pretty cool was the warehouse guy ended up like we worked out that it was obviously running up back up through the pipe because the pipe was pl- clogged. So he comes out and he brings this giant fucking axe and he like chops the pipe open that was running on the outside of the warehouse and then it's all the water just started falling on the floor instead of trying to go down this pipe that was clogged and then that fixed the problem of uh, of water falling out of the gutter um and the gutter being on the inside of the warehouse right so that's all that's all sorted and uh yeah man that that fucking sucked uh because a bunch of stuff got damaged but it's all right uh, and uh, thank you to all the Patreon supporters for, uh, I, rem- I I thought like, literally I was like, oh, if I didn't, if I didn't have that, I would just be fucked, you know, I would have to stop. But uh, thanks to Patreon people, we can keep going, I can pay the rent and uh, replace what was lost. So thank you uh, to everyone who supports me there. If you'd like to support me, consider uh, checking out my Patreon, you get early access to everything that I do. We've got our own Discord chat as well, and uh, a bunch of exclusive shit, and I'm working out how to put in, how to put uh, put up some stuff that's just for the Patreon people as well, um, which, will, which will be cool. I'm working on that, but obviously the main thing is working on uh, content. And wait, what was cool is even though we had the fucking flood of the warehouse, I finished filming the Lou review that we were filming. So that'll be coming out in two weeks. Uh, and that's what, that one's going to be a two-parter, man. I, I filmed this fucking awesome Lou review. And then I started doing my Rain Man research and I got way too in-depth. And then I discovered this giant scam. And then I started researching the scam. I was going to end the video with the scam, but then I found that it went way too deep. So I'm going to do a video on the subject and then a video on their scam. So Tuesday, the subject's video comes out thursday the in-depth rain man investigation is coming out because i know so many people have been asking me for more lure reviews like the nimble one the nimble loans and it's coming it's coming i've done i've done a lot of fucking research and i've found out some crazy shit so that's coming two weeks from now so we got one more tour vlog the latest one just dropped on tuesday and we got one more coming out in the next couple of days uh and then that'll be it that'll that'll be the final one the melbourne shows and that's uh great because spider lad's there and he gets on stage fucking lol um, all right, what else are we talking here? How long are we going for? What does that say? Oh, 16 minutes. Fuck, I thought I'd been going for 40 minutes. Man. Oh, no, 26 minutes. We're halfway through. I forgot that I stopped the recording. All righty. Um, oh, dude, did you see this shit? Do you see fucking Scott Morrison, our prime minister, getting in heaps of trouble for saying some pretty, uh, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, reasonable shit, right? So, uh, uh, Julian Assange, that WikiLeaks dude, he's getting fucked over. Um, that guy's beyond help. I really, um, that, that, re- that really fucking bums me out, man. What's happened to Julian Assange, the, the WikiLeaks guy who all he did was publish the truth and, uh, they're going to put him in jail forever. So he's locked up in the Ecuadorian embassy and, uh, I like how they, the news, man, it's so fucking, it's, it's scary how transparent the collaboration between the news and government is. Like, I don't want to get all Illuminati on you here, but did you notice when the government started moving on Julian Assange, trying to get him out of there and restricting his shit, right? Ecuador took away his internet connection and then everyone lost their shit about that. And then just miraculously, the week after they took away his internet connection, his connection with the outside world, all of a sudden, all of these different news organizations organization started posting articles about how Julian won't clean his room and he won't clean after his ca- clean up after his cats and how much of a slob he is and how much of a burden he is on the Ecuadorian embassy and we should probably get him out of the Ecuadorian embassy because the poor the poor embassy can't deal with him not cleaning his room isn't that bad maybe a better place for Julian Assange I think you would all agree would be uh, a maximum security uh, prison where he coincidentally gets stabbed to death for no reason and we don't nev- we never find out why maybe, maybe we should do that just to make the Ecuadorian embassy employees feel better right that's what the news was fucking saying 
So they did this giant news campaign about how Julian Assange is like a slob and disrespectful and he doesn't look after his cats. And I read this shit and I'm like, you know what? That's all probably true because I guarantee you that guy is depressed as fuck and probably going crazy because he's been locked in a fucking bedroom for the last decade. And they just took away his porn. Dude, I would neck myself. I'd be like, oh, what? You took him? That was the last thing. That was the last thing I enjoyed. I don't even run WikiLeaks anymore. I got fucking interns doing that shit from Switzerland. But now I can't jack it off to MILF porn. What the fuck? This sucks. I'm not going to feed my cat. (laughs) Right? So all this shit with Julian Assange, man. It's so transparent. The news like slandered him, called him a slob. You see all the fucking boomers on Facebook comments going, oh, we should get him out of there. He's a bloody traitor. Oh, who did he betray? Huh? Who did he betray? Fucking (laughs) no one, right? He just told you what the government was actually doing. But anyway... Um, because she's had fucking too many dicks and way too many drugs, Pamela Anderson somehow was involved in this shit. (laughs) Too many dicks and way too much drugs. Pamela Anderson is involved in this shit. She's some political fucking ally or whatever. And, um, so she's campaigning to free Julian Assange. And you know, right? I mean, you'd take what you would get. If you're Julian Assange... You're a sweaty cunt locked in a fucking bedroom for the last decade. If Pamela Anderson rocked up looking like a ghoul from Fallout 4 going, I used to be in Baywatch, but now I mainly just do cocaine and dicks. You'd be like, hey man, it's a route. It's a route. You know, I wouldn't brag about it, but I'd go there. (laughs) That's what, you know, there's, there's, there's a few, there's a few roots like that, you know, guy or girl, every girl has had, you know what, it's that, it's that route where you look at the guy or the, you look at the girl and you're like, you know, I'd go there, but I wouldn't brag about it. Like you wouldn't necessarily be ashamed, but you wouldn't be like, oh, girls, check out. Check out what I sucked on the other night. <laughs> you know, there's definitely those roots that are not not shameful, but also at the same time, nothing to be proud of. You know, it's just like, ah, I don't know. She does something for me. You know, there's always that, there's always that person that does something for you and horrifies your mates. Then that you go, man, I, and you find out... <clears throat> You find out because you see that person and you look at them and you go, fuck, man, I cannot believe this person wants to have sex with me. And then you show your mate and your mate goes, fuck, dude, I cannot believe you're even considering that troll. (laughs) There's always that. There's always at least one or two roots that you're not ashamed of, but you've also learned you shouldn't brag either. It's just like, that's one for me, you know? (laughs) That one was for me. This one was for my mates. <laughs> um, so anyway, Pamela Anderson is probably that. And she's some political activist for some reason because, of course, everyone's going to turn on Baywatch, look at those tits and go, hey, man, she's got some shit to say. She's, <laughs> she's got some shit worth listening to, right? Fuck Noam Chomsky. I listen to Pamela Anderson. I don't know if she can read, but fuck, she looks good when she reads whatever the fuck some other idiot wrote down. Right, so Pamela Anderson's like campaigning. Which, by the way, Pamela, I'm sure she's a lovely lady and she's doing the right thing. I think that he should be free. Um, But I'm also a cunt, so I think anything's funny, even if it's bad. Uh, uh, So Scott Morrison, our Prime Minister, I mean, I think he is our Prime Minister. He could just be the fucking janitor for all we know that's just been put in that position. Um... So he goes on radio, I think it was radio, and he did some interview, right? And he goes on and uh, 
Pamela Anderson was lobbying him to like say something about Julian Assange because Julian is Australian. So she was going, which is a fair point. Hey, uh, America is trying to lock up a fucking Australian forever. And if you don't, le- if you just let that happen, you're complicit. If you don't say anything, you're helping it happen, which I think is true. Um, and then so they asked Scott Morrison, the prime minister, about it on radio and uh he said something that <laughs> he said something to the effect they were like oh what do you think about what pamela anderson has to say will you respond uh to this and he said something like oh well uh i've got a few friends who would uh like to escort me to that interview basically saying so someone was like it's just so disrespectful in australian i fucking loved it i thought it was refreshing right so the interviewer was like um so pamela anderson Uh, has made a very big call and uh, she has said that if you do not speak up for Julian Assange, you will be complicit in putting him in jail for the rest of his life. What do you have to say uh, to Pamela Anderson? Would you do an interview with her? And then Scott Morrison went, (laughs) I don't know about a bloody interview, but I tell you what, I've got a couple of mates who'd like to fuck her with me. (laughs) If you know what I mean, (laughs) I'm the Prime Minister. (laughs) That's that's what he fucking did. That's what he said. He said, someone asked him a serious question. He goes, I don't know, mate, but I'd love to fuck her, that's for sure. And so would all of me friends. Let's run a train. Yeehaw, I'm an elected official. (laughs) Oh, man. So, Julian Assange is fucked. And if ScoMo roots her, he'll be fucked and cucked. All right. So, what else do we have to say here? I've got a bit more time before I do the fucking emails. <clears throat> um, Man, I'm so fucking... I saw this ridiculous fucking... Uh, thing on Twitter, a Twitter moment, and I don't know why, I don't know why I look at it, because it makes me, every, have you ever seen, have you ever seen a Twitter moment that didn't make you mad? Ever. Why do I go there? I don't even like seeing normal tweets. Why do I, why do I, I only, I only have Twitter, so I can literally write down, Twitter is, for me, is literally, I write down ideas that weren't good enough for the stage, weren't good enough for a video, aren't f- even funny enough to mention on this fucking podcast, and aren't good enough for a Snapchat or an Instagram story. So I put it on Twitter. It's the garbage disposal of my ideas. That's where it goes, in the fucking bin. So I don't know why, when that's how little respect I give my tweets, I don't know why I go on Twitter expecting to read shit that's remotely interesting. Who am I kidding? This is why I go on Twitter. I go on Twitter to see videos of like people in America punching on in like a McDonald's. <laughs> because you don't get that on Facebook anymore. You only get the real violent fucked up hood behavior on Twitter. And that's why we all go there for. And because every now and then you might get a little nude, because for some reason nudity is allowed on Twitter. So it's like, a, it's, a ni- it's like a nice little surprise. I don't follow any sexy accounts, but hey, if some titties are going to pop up in the timeline, I'm, I'm not going to stop scrolling. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh, fist fight, fist fight, fist fight, titties. Great. Love that. Let's check out the moments and lose my mind with rage. So one of these Twitter moments. And, uh, what was it? Oh, it was... Where the fuck was it? I'm going to look it up. Oh, that's right. So, this Twitter moment. And it's and it says... Oh, it, sound, it sounds like a fucking satirical article, dude. A guy asked a woman why... <laughs> a guy asked a woman why she has two laptops sparking a discussion about gender discrimination. (laughs) That's how fucking little white women have to complain about that they get shitty when a male oppressor asks them about their two $3,000 fucking laptops. Oh, oh, you're asking me about my two laptops that were made by 600 Vietnamese children. How dare you oppress me with your sexist language. So I'm, I'm like, all right, I'm in. I'm hooked, you got me, I open up this fucking moment, and it's this chick, 
And she writes, I take out both of my laptops. Two laptops! I take out both of my laptops at airport security. Random guy. Ha! Huh, what do you need two laptops for? Me. Well, one is for my astrophysics work, and one is for my artificial intelligence work. Hey, Amber, which one's for your massive fucking ego? And which one is for your big brain? <laughs> Where do you keep that? Do you got two phones for that? Have you got two phones too? Huh? That's such a normal question. If you see someone with two fucking laptops, you go, shit, man, two laptops? That's crazy. What do you have two laptops for? I have two laptops because one of them started to die, so I leave it here to do my merchandise on, and the other one is my fucking daily use one. But I don't carry them both around together, and if I did, I'd be like, oh yeah, this is why I got two laptops, because I'm fucking intelligent, you sexist pig. <laughs> well, one is for my astrophysics work, and one is for my artificial intelligence work. Fucking big brain Amber over here. And then she tweets, I am now trending on r slash I am very smart, <laughs> which is a board on Reddit that just screenshots super arrogant people telling other people how smart they are, which is fucking perfect. If anyone is curious as to why women might feel unwelcome in tech, check it out. Is astrophysics tech? Or is that science? I wouldn't know. I don't have enough. I don't have enough laptops to understand that shit. It's like fuck, man. That's how little. Maybe I'll make a. I might make a video about this. Actually, it's fucking ridiculous. That's how little white women have to complain about. They're like, oh, you have fucking pointed out that I've got two things that most people only have one of at an airport where everyone takes out their one thing. Ah, you. I'm fucking oppressed, aren't I? Shit, man. <clears throat> All right. What are we doing? What have we got here? Fuck, it's so hard to tell. Oh, we're going for it. Okay, we're at 20 minutes left. So, I'm going to do the uh, miscellaneous bit at the end. Before I do, uh, I'd like to plug one more time uh, Patreon. If you'd like to support what I do, if you enjoy it, if you'd like early access to it, and if you'd like to help out, uh, give me a little budget and make everything uh, a little bit smoother, uh, I would really appreciate your support there. It's cheap as fuck, and you get a Discord that I'm always in, and a early access and this oh there's a bunch of shit um also the, I restocked on all of my merchandise and uh, I'm only selling the stuff that has not been damaged by the flood so that's cool um if you want to check out t-shirts all the independent variable long sleeve tees just went on sale uh I've also restocked the hoodies uh there's there's a few there's not many but there's a few extra extra large and large left I think the other sizes might be sold out let me just double check before I fucking commit to that while I bring up these emails here. Um, but the hoodies went crazy. So I think I might have to get more done up. But I don't know. They're so expensive to fucking make. So I don't know if I can sink a bunch of money into that yet. So hey, maybe if they're gone, they're gone. What do we have here? How many do we have left? Fucking hoodies. I know we have. we still have Death Threats t-shirts. But hoodies might be gone. Are they gone? Fuck, this is sucks, man. Oh, here we go. Show me the SKUs. Alright, fuck. We have seven smalls, five mediums, uh, ten large, ten extra large. So if you want them, you're going to have to be quick because I don't think I'm going to restock uh, for a long time. I probably I will at some point, but not for a long time, if ever. All right. And loosebeers.com slash watch to get the hoodies and then slash merch to get everything else. It's a bit confusing, but it's just split up. Where are me fucking potty questions? Oh, here they are. <coughs> okay. Trying to find my loser soulmate abroad. G'day, cunt. I'm a big fan of yours. Keep up the good shit. Thank you, mate. Uh, so here's my story. Hopefully you can help me. I'm 24, living in Budapest, working in a bar. You're beyond help, bro. <laughs> I never understood those cunts that are just like, ah, 
I'm fucking 24. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna. I'm gonna move away from a good. Uh, my well, a good country. I'm gonna move away from where I was born and get a shit job somewhere else where I don't even speak the language. Where's Budapest? I'm shitting on something that I've never even heard of before. As any any bets is like some suburb in fucking. What's oh, in Hungary? The capital of Hungary. That's a fuck. Is that a fucking weird place to, to go? I'm, ah, I'm, I live in Hungary now. That's fucking strange. I mean, good on you. I mean, I did call it a shithole, but I don't think Hungary is a shithole. I'll Google it. Is Hungary a shithole? Well, we've got how come Hungary is a shithole? There you go. We've got Reddit. What did people find to be the worst thing about living in Hungary? Um. To me, it's the post-socialist, ultra-collectivist... Mi- Man, I need six laptops to understand what that means. It's the post-socialist, ultra-collectivist mindset that discourages and is suspicious of any sort of initiative taking. People decided that life is shit, politicians steal, so we might as well not do anything about that ever to change it. Ah, oh, that does sound like it sucks. Hey, man. I know that's not your question, but I just wanted to find out about hungry. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm 24, living in Budapest, working at a bar. About a year ago, a girl moved in alone to the flat below me. (laughs) Alone, you say? Uh, (laughs) I don't know why I did that. That was fucking weird. Um, And through my windows, I've been... Oh, come on, dude. You're giving a bad reputation to the listeners of my podcast. Don't do this. I, I, or I haven't even read what he's been doing, but all I heard is like, through my windows, I've been listening. <laughs> Stalking cunt. All right. About a year ago, a girl moved in alone to the flat below me, and through the windows, I've been listening to her singing, playing with her dogs, and listening to music, and basically developing a big crush on her. Fuck, man. Only one of mine could fucking fall in love with a woman by listening to her talk to her dogs. Hey, dude. <laughs> that's fucking sad hang on I need to get my inhaler that's sad I'll be back in a second I'm not gonna pause it though fuck you alright time to get my fucking inhaler before I die oh man that's not a pack don't even know where it is it could be in my bag could be somewhere else fucking no that's a battery I uh, couldn't find it, so I guess I'm going to (laughs) die. All right. Sorry about that. Still going? Okay. Where are we? Uh, About a year ago, a girl moved in alone to the... Alone to the flat below me, and through the windows, I've been listening to her... I've been... I can't even read this, it's so creepy. Through the windows, I've been listening to her singing, playing with her dogs, and listening to music, basically developing a big crush on her. I could tell from her accent she's British, and from and from watching from my apartment, I've seen she's decent looking and has a few dogs. What are you doing? Go and talk to her. Don't just fucking watch her from your hole. Uh... From my apartment, I've seen she's decent looking and has a few dogs. To top it all off, I've heard her listening to your podcast every Sunday. Hey, (laughs) every single girl listening to this shit has just got chills. (laughs) And they just started looking out their window going, fuck man. Oh no, who's watching me? Like any girl with dogs just pissed her pants. She's like, oh no, who's fucking watching me listen to this shit? To top it all off, I've heard her listening to your podcast every Sunday. So, she's definitely my soulmate. Uh, I've been waiting so long building up the courage to speak to her, but every time we've crossed paths, it's been a bad time. What do you mean it's been a bad time? You walk past her and... Like, what is she doing? Fucking running to put out a fire? Um, All I know is her dog is called Lil Ricky, 
and she said her name once, but I've never heard it before. I have no idea how to spell it to find her online. Oh man, dude, you're like doing, you're doing it back. Whoa. So your plan was to watch her from your window for so long until she says her Instagram username in conversation to one of her dogs, and then you'd follow her. <laughs> How'd you find me? Well, uh, I was listening uh, through the window for the last six months of you talking to your dog, and then you said your Instagram username to your dog, so I followed you, and I'm in love with you because you listen to a podcast that I also like. (laughs) Fuck, man. Uh, I have no idea how to spell it to find her online, and now I've noticed that she's moved out. The current tenant has no contact details, and I've missed my chance. Wait, so that means you are the current tenant. I thought you went up to the fucking landlord and was like, Where's my princess? I'm hoping you can read this out on your podcast and maybe she'll hear it and we can find a way to get in contact. She's probably gone into hiding, bro. (laughs) She's gone, man. Maybe she'll hear it and we can find a way to get in contact. Podcast, Facebook group, maybe. If she's listening... If she is listening, I would love to have dinner and maybe she hasn't seen the comedy special yet and wants to watch it with me. Please help. I would hate to think I've missed my chance with the only other loser in this city and definitely one of the very few female losers who isn't a denim wearing lesbian. Have a shit one. Um, yeah, man, I'm pretty sure I made that sound a lot creepier than it is. Um, I, I mean, if this girl wants to hit me up, Message my page or my Instagram or my Snapchat or whatever, and you and me can go on a date. And we'll f- you know fuck this guy. <laughs> no, if you are, if the, if you think that is you listening, and uh, send me a message or send me an email to podcast at loosebeers.com if you think it's you, um, or a message on one of my socials. Uh, and if you want to link up, I will connect you. If you don't want to link up, message me anyway. I want to hear your side of the story. All right. Uh, if this is you, I would love to fucking get an email from you explaining it, because that would amuse me, all right? So either way, message me, uh, I'll keep you anonymous if you want, or I'll pass on your info if you want as well, okay? So thanks for emailing me, dude. I hope you can fucking track her down, you weird cunt. Um, how long have we got going here? Okay, we've got about 10 more minutes, I'll do one more. Um, <clears throat> where are we? Fuck, man. I need to look up these emails before I go. Okay. Annoying neighbors. Okay. Hey, Lou. I'm moving out of my apartment in a month, and I would love to leave my downstairs neighbors a parting gift. They have a DJ side business while going to uni. Long story short, loud music at all hours of the night, despite the complex having quiet hours. So they've been fucking ruining your day. <clears throat> I've also recently noticed a very strong smell of weed. The, bu- the building has a no smoking policy. Normally I would ignore it, but it's gotten to be strong enough for me to break out air freshness. I acquired one of their business cards for their de- for, for their DJ business with their email and phone numbers a while back. Without going into a long explanation, they have no idea I have their card. Any ideas for a fun goodbye prank? I was thinking of signing them up for spam emails under the name Anita BJ. <laughs> Have a shit one. Um, <clears throat> nah, dude. Fuck the email thing. If you really... Yeah, yeah, you come to the expert. If you really want to fuck with someone, right? You know where they live. This is harmless, but it's, it'll confuse them forever. What you do, right, is uh, you get a plate. So not a bowl. It cannot be a bowl. It has to be a plate. Quite a large plate. And what you do is you piss on the plate. Okay? Fill the plate up with piss. And then you take your plate of piss. And this is, this is the hard bit. You very carefully take your piss plate and you put it in the freezer and then you wait. Come back the next day, you've got yourself a frozen plate of piss. Then what you do with that frozen plate of piss, you go down to their door. You go down and then you you take the, the, the frozen piss, make sure it retains its shape so you've got a nice disc of your own frozen piss. And what you do is you slide the disc under their door and what happens is because it's not in the freezer the disc of piss will melt 
And then they will wake up the next morning, go to leave their house and find a puddle of piss at their front door with no explanation as to how it got there. Now, if they don't have pets, this is the best shit ever. Because if they don't have pets and they have a girlfriend or a boyfriend, those two, for the rest of their relationship, will think the other one woke up in the middle of the night, pissed on the floor, and then denied it and blamed it on them. Or if they live alone, mystery piss. Fuck, where did the mystery piss come from? And it's, a, and it's a disc. So it obviously hasn't... No one's pissed under the door. You slide it under and you, you kind of throw it under. So it doesn't break, but it lands far away enough from the door that they know no one could have pissed under the door. It's a puddle. And then they'd be like, fuck, man, did I wake up in the middle of my sleep and sleepwalk and piss? Or did someone break in and piss? Or is this a ghost piss? That's what you do, man. The frozen disc of piss. (laughs) Go, my son. Do me proud. All right, guys. That's the end of the podcast. And this works great. That's a great university prank. That's a great prank on your fucking roommate. Slide the the piss disc under their door. Your brother, your sister. Fun times for the whole family. Not really. Fun times for you, okay? Then you've got a mystery piss puddle in their fucking room. They don't know where it's come from, and there's no explanation for it. All right, that's the end of the podcast, guys. Thank you very much for listening. Support me on Patreon. Grab some merch. Check out my videos. Rate me five stars on iTunes, and get ready to vote in the fucking podcast awards. The campaign has started now. <coughs> Voting doesn't open for months, but it started now. All right, thank you, guys. I will talk to you next Sunday. Have a fucking shit one.